Okay, sorry, you're interviewing Andy. Hello, uh, Rick. Hi, this is Hello, WPKN 89.5 FM in Bridgeport, Connecticut. Today, live from the International Space Station, I have astronaut, NASA astronaut Rick Mastracchio, Waterbury, Connecticut native and graduate of University of Connecticut. Good morning, Rick, and thanks for being with us this morning. Uh, hello, Bridgeport. Welcome to the International Space Station. Hi there, Rick. Can you hear me okay? Yes, I can hear you loud and clear. Can you hear me? Yes, thanks. Uh, you, uh, you and the, uh, other members of the Expedition 38 crew brought something very special to the International Space Station, the Olympic torch. Can you tell us a little bit about your, that very cool journey of the torch? Yes, it was like our own little Olympic relay. Uh, the expedition, uh, or so I should say Soyuz 11 crew, which was part of the crew that I was on, we brought the torch to the International Space Station. The Soyuz 10 crew then took that torch out on a spacewalk out EVA outside the International Space Station. And then the Soyuz 9 crew landed with the torch about five days after we arrived. So it went from uh, uh, Soyuz 11 to 10 to 9 and back to, the, uh, back to Russia where it will continue its uh, Olympic relay. That's very cool. Uh, you graduated from Crosby High School in Waterbury, and um, you also attended the University of Connecticut in RPI. Yes, that's correct. Okay. Uh, you also work for Hamilton Standard. Can you tell us a little bit about your educational experience and uh, work experience while you were living in Connecticut? Okay, yes. After graduating high school in uh, Waterbury, Connecticut, I attended the University of Connecticut. I got a degree in uh, electrical engineering and computer science. And coming, uh, once I graduated from UConn, I went right to work with Hamilton Standard in Farmington, Connecticut. There we were developing guidance systems and uh, flight control systems for various aircrafts and satellites. And it was uh, while I was there that I went to night school in Hartford, Connecticut, attending RPI, a branch of RPI in Hartford, Connecticut. And after about five years, I started applying as an, a NASA astronaut. And I didn't get the job right away, but I was called down to become uh, engineer at the Johnson Space Center, so I left the uh, Waterbury area in 1987 to start my career at the Johnson Space Center. On your three previous space shuttle missions, you spent uh, a maximum of, of 14 days on any specific mission. Uh, now you're going to be spending six months on the International Space Station. How did you prepare yourself mentally and physically uh, for this long duration in space? Yeah, that's correct. Six months up here is a long time. Well, the training in itself kind of prepares us for this long time away from family and away from home in that we spend a lot of time traveling. Those two and a half years of training, we spend a lot of time tra uh, traveling. In fact, I spent over a year in uh, Russia, Star City, Russia, during that two and a half years. I spent uh, maybe uh, eight or nine weeks in Germany and a few weeks in Japan, a few weeks in Canada. So we spend a lot of time away from home when we're training, and that, and, and for me, I think it actually prepares us to be away from home for six months. It, it was nothing for me to be away from home for two months, so now I'm just away from home just a little bit longer than uh, one of my training trips, if you will. So it, it prepares us very well. You've helped uh, build the International Space Station. You actually bolted segments of the station together. Uh, that's very cool, and now you're working there. Can you tell us what a typical day is like on the station? What it's like to work, eat, and sleep in, I'm sorry, in microgravity? Yeah, well, I could just talk about just today, for example. Today was, it's been an interesting day so far. It's only about half over. We were working and checking out one of our spacesuits that we did some repairs on a few months ago. 
And then on the other side of the space station, the Japanese module, they actually launched three small satellites from the Japanese robotic arm, and we got some great photos and video of that. Meanwhile, there's a lots of uh, research and science going on. Just off to my left, just off camera, there's a great experiment going on right here. And, uh, and that's, that's happening around the clock, basically, experiments and research. So it's, uh, it's a very busy place, and it's very exciting to uh, be a part of it. Rick, you're basically free-falling uh, as the International Space Station follows the curvature of the Earth. I know you're traveling at five miles per second. And I'm watching you. You kind of look like you are kind of free-falling a little bit. But I'd like to know, uh, what's the sensation you feel when you're weightless in space? Well, you know, it changes. When you first get here, you get a, you know, it takes you a little time for your body to adapt. It's quite a change coming from a 1G environment to a 0G environment, if you will. Uh, it takes time. You get a lot of, uh, you get a lot of blood rushes to your head. It takes uh, several days for that to kind of your body to uh, e equalize all that. Of course, there's the queasiness that you can get from like almost like being on a constant roller coaster. That takes a few days to get over for some people. Some people don't get it at all. Uh, but uh, it's great. I mean, once you your body adapts to it, it's it's a blast. You have to learn how to kind of move very slowly because if you push off too hard, you know, there's nothing to stop you. You basically will go flying across the module. It's very easy to injure yourself. So it takes uh, it takes several weeks to get used to how fast or how slow you need to move around the modules. But it, it sure is uh, it sure is fun, and I think the human body adapts to it pretty quickly, in my opinion. You've uh, been on three space shuttle missions uh, and had six spacewalks. Um, my question is, do you have any EVAs planned for this mission while you're on the International Space Station? There are no American or U.S. OS EVAs planned. There are some Russian EVAs. We had the one with the torch uh, just about a week and a half ago, and there's another Russian EVA planned in, uh, I think, a couple of weeks, and then there'll be some at, uh, after the new year. But there's no U.S. Um, uh, or American EVAs planned at this time. But, of course, we are always ready to perform spacewalks. If there's some kind of malfunction outside that we have to go out and replace a, a box or uh, fix a connection or something like that, we're always ready to do that. You posted some wonderful images uh, from the Earth from uh, of the Earth from space through social networking. Is there a favorite place for you to look at on the Earth from space? Well, I haven't found a favorite place yet. Uh, everything is uh, pretty interesting. But uh, one of the things I really do enjoy is at night uh, we see a lot of uh, of uh, lightning storms and lightning. Is just a, is just incredible to look at from above the uh, from above the Earth here because the lightning seems to dance around the whole. Sometimes a whole continent will be covered with a, a, a large storm, and the lightning will just dance all over the place. So I really enjoy that. Uh, but uh, you know, looking at all the different islands and the land masses and the beautiful colors of the ocean, it's hard to pick any one favorite thing yet for me. Of course, all of our listeners here in the local area, of course, Fairfield and uh, New Haven counties, would like to know if you still follow UConn sports. Yeah, it's a little difficult up here, but, uh, yeah, I, I'm always looking, uh, checking out the newspaper, seeing how the team's doing, and every once in a while they're even on TV in, uh, in Houston, believe it or not. Rick, thanks for being with us today. Our listeners in the greater Bridgeport area and all of us at WPKN wish you a prosperous day on the International Space Station and a soft landing when you return. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate all the great questions. Great. Thanks again, Rick. And remember, you can always listen to us uh, live on the web at uh, WPKN.org from the space station. Thank you very much. Station, this is Houston ACR. That concludes the WPKN radio portion of the event. Please stand by for a voice check from WRGB-TV. Station, this is WRGB-TV. Do you hear me? Yes, I hear you. Good morning or, or afternoon or, or whatever time it is up there, Rick. This is uh, Matt Markham from WRGB in Albany. It's uh, 
nice to talk to you. And the first thing I have to tell you is that I've never actually talked to somebody in space before, so it's very cool to be able to do this and uh, do it especially with somebody who has a local connection of sorts. Uh, you uh, spent some time with RPI in Hartford. Can you tell us a little bit about that experience? Uh, yes, I can. After I graduated from the University of Connecticut, I was working in the uh, Hartford area at uh, Hamilton Standard at the time, and I decided I wanted to go to get a, get a master's degree. And of course, RPI, uh, the Hartford campus, was uh, was uh, had a great reputation, and it was uh, it was not far from where I was working. So I started to uh, go to night school there to get my master's degree, and it was a great experience. I really enjoyed it. Um, this, I understand, is your fourth trip up there, and uh, you have something special with you, I understand, the Olympic torch. Is that right? Well, we brought the Olympic torch with us on launch day uh, as part of the Soyuz 11 crew. We handed it off to the Soyuz 10 crew, who took it out on a spacewalk, and then they handed it off to the Soyuz 9 crew, who landed about four or five days after we arrived. So the torch has already been here and been returned to uh, Russia, where it's continuing the Olympic relay to the Sochi, to the games in Sochi. That had to be something of an incredible experience to be a part of. And just looking at you and seeing how you're somewhat weightless up there, what is that feeling like? I think some of us might not even be able to imagine what it's like to be in space. Well, uh, like I was saying earlier to the, uh, the other folks, it, uh, it takes a while for your body to adapt. It takes, it takes a couple of days for your body to adapt. But once you do, it is a blast to be able to float around and to be able to move. Uh, massive objects without any effort whatsoever. It is, uh, it, it's, the body does a great job adapting, and uh, once you do, it's, it's, uh, it's a lot of fun. I, I'm really enjoying myself up here. Can you tell us a little bit about the work that you're doing up there as well? Oh, sure. You know, the number one thing that we do up here is, uh, is we're conducting scientific research, at any one time, there are dozens of experiments going on. During the six months that I will spend here, hundreds of experiments will be, will be performed in one way or another. So on a daily basis, we have different types of experiments going on. Sometimes we are the experiments ourselves, where we're taking blood samples or different, doing different kinds of tests on ourselves. And sometimes we're kind of the technicians, where we're taking samples in and out of a, some kind of test stand and working with the scientists on the ground. So it's a, a regular, a daily basis we're doing these things. Now, you can't quite run to Home Depot if you need to fix something up there. So if something does happen that you need to either go outside or stay inside, you know, how able are you to actually troubleshoot and, and uh, perhaps fix things as you're trying to do some of your work up there? Well, we do that pretty much on a regular basis. I mean, things, this is a very complicated place with a lot of computers, a lot of moving parts. So obviously things don't always work properly, and we have to repair them. Of course, we have a great team on the ground that are experts in everything that's up here, and they help us uh, deep, uh, figure out what's going on and help us fix it. But we also have a lot of spare parts. We have, all, we have a lot of tools, all the proper tools. And with the tools and the spare parts that we have and with the uh, smart folks on the ground, we could repair just about anything. Is there anything from home that you were able to bring with you to remember your family or what life is like here on Earth that you can at least look at once in a while, a picture or anything maybe? Oh, yeah, of course. So we get to bring a very small amount of personal items. I've got pictures of my family. I've got uh, some personal mementos. I've brought up uh, items for folks. Uh, that I worked with and friends and families and things like that. I got one thing that might be interesting to you. Uh, it might be interesting to know that after I, after I return in May, another RPI graduate, Reed Wiseman, will be replacing me here on the uh, International Space Station. So Reed and I got together and we contacted the folks at RPI, and uh, we're going to keep this up here, and he'll be up here when he arrives, and he'll take it home about a year from now. It must be nice to be able to share that kind of camaraderie with somebody, too. Uh, are, are, there, are there other RPI uh, graduates who are in this program with you outside of this other gentleman? 
I think Reed Wiseman are the two, only two active astronauts in the program that uh, ever attended RPI in any way. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about how that experience with RPI made you that much better at what you do and how much more passionate, perhaps, about what you're doing on the space station? Well, of course, uh, you know, all the experiences you ex experience in life obviously help you become the person that you are. Uh, I think my time both at the University of Connecticut and at RPI helped me become a much better engineer, and that uh, gave me the confidence to apply to NASA. I think it also gave me the qualifications that I needed to get into uh, as an engineering program at NASA and then eventually get selected as an astronaut. So without uh, my schooling at UConn and RPI, of course, I could not be where I am today. The last question I think I would have for you is, uh, as somebody who has been where few men have been before, what's one thing maybe you learned on the space station, one thing you saw that really just kind of took your breath away that very few other people will ever be able to experience? Oh, that's a tough question. I would have to say the best thing is probably my spacewalks. When you go out on a spacewalk, uh, you know, you're like your own little spacecraft out there, and you have this great view through your visor. And uh, the views of the Earth and just uh, and, uh, kind of floating above the Earth while you're trying to repair or try to build the International Space Station, those memories are burned in my, uh, in my brain, and I will never forget those. They were, uh, they were some, some great views, and I could never forget those. Well, well, it was a real honor to talk with you. Thank you very much for taking some time out of your day. Uh, it was a real treat for us to be able to talk to somebody on the space station. And, and one other thing maybe I would ask you before I let you go. Um, what's the rest of your day look like? How do you, how do you plan your day? It's 947 here in Albany, New York. Uh, what's, what's the rest of your day like up there? Well, we already had a busy day today. It's kind of towards the end of our day up here. Uh, we did some uh, spacesuit uh, checkout and repair this morning. We also launched three small satellites uh, off the Japanese robotic arm. We got scientific experiments going on. So I've got a few more tasks for today, but uh, the day will be over in a couple hours for us up here. All right. Well, uh no rest for the weary then, and, uh, and we'll let you go back and do some of that. But, uh, sir, it was a real, real pleasure to speak with you, and uh, all the best up there. Uh, we appreciate your time, and uh, look forward to you coming back. Well, thank you very much. Station, this is Houston ACR. That concludes the event. Thank you. Thank you, uh, W. PKN Radio and WRGB-TV Station, we're now resuming operational audio communications.